Alright, this is Christopher Foster once again. And this is a request to sign for Sandy. What I want. I think this video is the werewolf, the teen werewolf decapitates dog, the bizarre story of Wolfie. Oh my god, it's gonna be fucked up. Okay, let's check it out. Yay. Massive success of the Twilight movies. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, a bizarre, obscure subculture began to bubble up in the mainstream. It was the wolf Got Blue Prime this time, guys. It's really good. This is a community of folks who consider themselves to be This is a furry shit, isn't it? They wear fluffy tails, black yeah. studded clothing, create lichen inspired aliases, and even form Hope this ain't any beastiality beast 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 shit or something. While perhaps Weird. a frightening sight for some, these teen wolves are generally harmless. That said, though, there were some disturbing reports from this time that may have indicated that at least one teen wolf was taking this whole wolfkin obsession a bit too far. In early 2010, they show anything out of the age restricted video. Was accused of killing and decapitating a dog. What? The okay, that's fucked up. Had been floating around various Why would you show that? Time and was eventually discovered by 4chan's Animal and Nature Board. Believing Wolfie to be responsible for the killing and subsequent mutilation of this dog, 4chan went on a vigilante hunt to track down this oh alleged God. killer and bring her to justice. Wolfie would eventually be found and identified, prompting a police investigation. Oh but God, she's got a knife. What she did a giant knife. That's a psychopath right there. The internet had initially painted it out to be. So what does that even mean? Well, stick around and find out. This is the story of Wolfie Blackheart. Wolfie Blackheart, huh? Let's see what she's got. Are you getting bad sleep? Sleep that's so bad that it's driving you crazy oh, enough to he's... go full werewolf mode? <laughs> that was me until I got the sponsor of today's video, Helix Sleep. Uh, oh. Don't mind the claws, they're a work in progress. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding customized for your specific I need one of those mattresses, for sure. Door. In order to pair you with the perfect mattress, Helix has you take a sleep quiz before ordering, which takes into account your preferred sleeping position and body type. Do I have to really well. show any of this? Is this some sponsoring a video? I guess I have to. Mattresses, one that best fits your preferences. Personally, I'm a side sleeper that likes a medium. Where's the request? Mattress, so I have so to. Helix paired me with their midnight line of mattresses. I upgraded to the midnight looks and I probably can't afford any of these mattresses. I have a cheap fucking box spring on top of a fucking sponge. That's all I have for a bed. Peel off the plastic and then this mask will expand out into a luxuriously comfortable mattress. I've been sleeping on my Well, a sponge on top of a box spring, what's I meant to say? Look at that. That's a sponge and that's the fucking box spring right there. That's all it is. back pain I was having. It cleared it up after a couple of weeks, but I have had no issues with this thing. Seriously, if you're not getting good sleep or waking up with pains, I highly recommend... I sleep pretty good in my bed, though. I, I'm used to it. Dry. Every Helix mattress comes with a 10-year warranty and a 100-day sleep trial. So if I have the money, I definitely get one of these, for, for sure. Reasons, in that first 100 days, you can return it and get a full refund. So with that said, it's time to fix your sleep problems before you go full werewolf. You guys can go to Helix. I don't think I'm turning into a werewolf, but to get up to two hundred dollars off your Helix Sleep mattress plus two free pillows, free shipping in the U.S. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the story. Let's go. The story begins in early 2010 in San Antonio, Texas. Around this time, a group of teenagers interested in the Wolfkin subculture had banded together to form the Crimson Blood Wolf Pack. This Wolf Pack served as a friend group with a twist. It was really more than that, actually. Wolf pack members considered themselves they look fat. nice. Nothing wrong with being a furry. I'm just saying, not many people alpha, gonna gonna really like that kind of stuff. Wolf pack's alpha was none other than Wolfie Blackheart. Hey guys, Wolfie Blackheart. Hello. Eighteen years old at the time. That video looks really old. Really, really old. Was well respected not just in her own pack, but by other packs around the San Antonio area. Yes, there were. Is she still doing YouTube? Social media photos from the time. I don't, know, I don't even know who this is. Interests. Very much immersed into like and mythology, one finds a bounty of photos of Wolfie posing with dogs. Mm, those those, some, those pictures make me uncomfortable. Don't watch she fucking did. Makeup, oh my god. She looks like a fucking Wolfie's serial identity. killer. Wolfie even claimed to have an allergy to silver. You know, the only metal known to be able to kill werewolves and lore. Check this out. Oh my god, 
think a lot of people would say, oh, you're allergic to silver. I personally am allergic to silver and nickel, but not all werewolves are. Like, it's an individualistic thing. Why? Like, someone can be allergic to flowers, you know. Um, we don't, it, you don't change into a furry bloodthirsty beast on the full moon. So I tried to send a good example. I do make mistakes. We all do. Wolfie was yeah, we do make mistakes, but... And there was a bit of a local and online obsession with her. I've had people at GameStop ask me for autographs or to take pictures or, like, just, like, beg to hug me and like, stuff like that. And I don't mind, like, you come up and hug me. It's, it's, I find it funny that they really, like, want to freak out about it. I don't really get it. For all the kids, thank you. She wasn't only That's nice. But she had a mischievous She's got fans. About her, adding to the mystery that would come to make her an enigmatic figure. A few years ago, Wolfie was arrested at an area high school for carrying a large knife on campus. She wasn't enrolled as a student at the time. Why would you be carrying around a knife? She was also once arrested Holy on a shit, is that trip. real? I was proven not guilty. Why would you carry that in public? Which I'm always in the woods. And Why? Uh, they caught me and my friend in the woods. We didn't do the break-in. While indeed a strange and alluring figure, it didn't seem like... When you carry on something like that, don't be too surprised if they think that you're a serial killer. ...in the lifestyle that she was promoting. But in late January, a shocking development would surface that suggested Wolfie may not have been the innocuous pseudo-influencer everyone thought she was. Don't tell me she killed a fucking dog. Don't tell me she killed another animal freak. <laughs> Late in the month, a photo would surface on 4chan showing an outstretched arm holding a decapitated dog's Why would you even show that on YouTube? That picture is really creepy, man. A swift investigation into the origin and circumstances which Why would she take that damn picture? The image. Those familiar with the deep lore of 4chan will know that 4chan takes animal abuse allegations very seriously and has outed actual abusers on several occasions. Close Entertainment, Dolly Flash. IRC chat room dedicated to solving the alleged crime. Many leads were discovered in this IRC chat room, and using EXIF image data and a MySpace social media deep dive, 4chan was able to trace the origins of this photo back to Wolfie Blackheart and some associates of the Crimson Blood Wolf Pack. Names and phone numbers would be revealed with some cyber sleuthing, which then resulted in board members firing a shotgun spread of calls and texts to these numbers in an attempt to get a confession and pin the wolf pack with the alleged crime of killing and beheading this dog. This shotgun spread of calls and texts would actually result in an anonymous associate of Wolfie joining this chat room and explaining what had happened. This anonymous person went by the name Razor, and this is what they had to say. Everyone shut up for a sec. Sec. Raz. Okay, I R Raz. No one killed the fucking dog. A truck running through my neighborhood ran him over. I tried to save him, but he died on the way to the vet. Oh. I'm the dog's caretaker. He was astray. I took him in. I hate my friends for defiling the body. They beheaded it. Dog died in a car accident. They just messed with the body. A purported subsequent okay, that's so fucked up, though. ...by an anonymous board member would reveal more information. Apparently in this call, Razor claimed that the dog in question was allegedly a stray one of Wolfie's friends had picked up and had been... That's so very suspicious whether she did it or not. Why would you take a picture of you holding the fucking dog head? Like it's some out of some horror movie. ...closure and getting hit by a vehicle. In this purported call, it's alleged that Shadow was then given to some friends, unnamed in the call, to prepare for burial when it was apparently later decided that the head of the dog would be preserved as a keepsake. And it goes without saying, considering Wolfie's penchant for collecting animal skulls, well, heavy speculation was that Wolfie was the one responsible for this preservation. So Why would you collect something like that? Well, dug up I can understand, but and it and their if she killed that dog, then I'm gonna be pissed the fuck off. If you said she and killed that dog, I'm not gonna be too happy. If the authorities would actually even respond to something like this. Now, if you thought the story was already pretty weird, it just keeps getting weirder. It is because weird. This time, a woman named Kathy Silva would come forward claiming that. Shadow was in fact one time her dog, and the dog went by the name Rigsby until one day Rigsby mysteriously disappeared from her yard. Oh, what the hell is going on with the subtitles? You're not matching what he's saying. Was perhaps stolen by one of Wolfie's friends and renamed as Shadow. This remains unproven, as it's very well possible that if Shadow really was in fact Kathy Silva's pet, 
He could have simply escaped her well, residence and was mistaken as a stray, then taken in by Wolfie's friends. Taking in a dog that you believe to be a stray, that's one thing, but obviously, you know, stealing an animal, uh, there's some implications there. But there's really no way to prove this one way or the other. Anyways, let's check in on how those authorities are doing. Well, after doing some snooping around, authorities learned by word of mouth and various online chatter that Wolfie was known for being in possession of a collection of animal skulls and that she may have actually been given the body of Shadow. So naturally, a search warrant was issued for Wolfie Blackheart's residence. Police would arrive and initiate a search, and inside the home was none other than Shadow slash Rigsby's decapitated head now reduced God, stop to that a picture, man. I don't like Wolfie that. Wolfie had reportedly boiled it down. The raid was covered by local media. Tonight, truth stranger than fiction. Investigation into a beheaded dog leads police to a self-proclaimed wolf girl. Wolfie, she claims she's a werewolf. She's into taxidermy, but this time she may have gone too far. A group of people, mostly online, have accused her of beheading a dog. How is that allowed on TV? I wouldn't. Like, like I said, I'd be more likely to hurt a human than a dog any day. And even then, very, very, like, not really possible. I'm pretty friendly. Now, 18-year-old Wolfie is under investigation. Pretty friendly. I didn't get him as Rigsby. My friend brought him as her dog who got hit by a car named Shadow. And was he alive at the time? Dead. Dead. He was kind of stiff. Wolfie claims she's done nothing illegal. She says there's a group of people harassing her. They've even hacked into her personal accounts online. Animal cruelty investigators have been to Wolfie's home before. Right now, there's an open investigation surrounding complaints. Now, you have to ask yourself, is Wolfie going to be getting in trouble for this? Well, if it could be proven that the dog was killed only to get its skull, absolutely. But if the head was obtained after it was already dead, that's something else entirely, as it's essentially just amateur taxidermy. Wolfie has gone on record several times telling her side of the story, claiming that she did indeed decapitate the dog's head, but only after it was dead as to taxidermy Shadow's skull for the current owner, who is a fellow wolfkin, as a spiritual keepsake. I got accused of killing and beheading a dog. I did behead him. I didn't kill him. He was my friend. His name was Shadow. And uh, he got hit by a car and they brought his corpse to me. And they asked me to Did you ask so consent did. before you the cut his fucking dead body's head off, though? Him. And uh, they put it online. And that's what's called on the And with this explanation in mind, at the time of the raid, there weren't any charges being pressed, but the investigation was still ongoing. By this time, the story had gone nationwide and it proved to be quite the controversy. Much online debate swirled around this topic, and many believe that even if Wolfie's story was true, what she did was reprehensible. But with that said, there were also staunch supporters of Wolfie that would take to YouTube claiming she did nothing wrong. This is a video demonstrating my support to Wolfie Blackheart. Uh, I think she's innocent, and I think the media is overreacting. I support Wolfie Blackheart forever. She's always been a good influence to me. She is not an animal killer. She is very innocent. I just like to say that I respect I mean you're a hell of a lot bigger than I would be in this situation. Um and you know, you just gotta fight through all the hate because they're gonna hate on you no matter what. Story of my life. Wolfie's well, reckoning. Despite all the public outcry, there was no evidence collected in the police search that indicated that Wolfie, or anyone for that matter, had intentionally killed the dog. It appeared that after performing the search, a police believed the story about Shadow being killed by a passing car. And additionally, there was nothing that suggested to investigators that the decapitation of the dog was an act done out of malice or to fulfill some sick fantasy. While indeed disturbing and outside of the realm of anything you or I would do, the taxidermy of the dog's skull was done by Wolfie only to memorialize Shadow for her friend. A bizarre wolfkin ritual, if you will. With it's all creepy, mind, but it's actually kind of sweet in a way, I guess, if that's the truth. Charges against Wolfie Blackheart and the investigation would cease. In the wake of the controversy, Wolfie would begin to slink away from the public eye, but she wouldn't be forgotten. After the national attention, she became a living legend amongst Wolfkin nationwide. A cursory tribute. search on YouTube with wow. dozens of tribute videos created by individuals participating in the subject. Something I'll never get. These videos People make videos about me. They'll never make a tribute to me. With photos idolizing her. People are... I'm about popular of a YouTuber. The cult of like she was. She had developed. And while there are many that idolize her, there are an equal and opposite group of people that feel as if there was a great injustice dealt in the handling of the Rigsby slash Shadow beheading situation. 
Additionally, many point to the allegations that Shadow was stolen from That's his That's a creepy owner. looking picture After of that. After all, if that was the head. case, the implications of the taxidermy become far more questionable. After all, imagine, say, if Rigsby really was stolen, you were looking for your lost dog Rigsby, and then later you stumble across this decapitated head on the internet, only to find out some other kin wolf people had taken him in and decapitated his head. That would just be a real tragedy. Whatever the case, one positive takeaway from this story is the internet's, more specifically 4chan's, continued commitment to protecting our animal friends, leaving no stone unturned when it comes to investigating cases like this. While this case appears to be somewhat of a dead end, can you really blame 4chan for going all in here, considering the uh, shocking nature of the photo that ended up on their board? Mm -hmm. Hopefully their it's animal creepy. defense tendencies will continue. But that, my friends, was the bizarre story of Wolfie Blackheart. Let me know what you thought about this video down below in the comments section. I would imagine some of you guys have a lot to say about it. It's a pretty, you know, controversial one. So it is. like on the video, let me know who or what you want me to talk about next, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I want to give a make- What? Oh, he's just supporting his Patreon. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to believe. I mean, if she's not hurting anybody, if she asked consent before she could, before she made the, before she touched the dog, she asked consent, and they said, hey, fine, you can do whatever you want, just make sure you keep them in their hearts. I'm like, yeah. But it can go either way. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bitch at anybody. I'm just gonna say it was all in good heart. But, yeah. So, with that said, guys, let me know what you think of the situation down below. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you guys in the next one. Peace.